John McPherson, syndicated cartoonist, author, and professional speaker, has a message on being creative that helps people understand how to expand their creative thinking. What separates a good organization from a great organization? It's their level of creativity and the team's desire to achieve greatness. John's cartoon, Close to Home, is read daily in more than 650 newspapers worldwide. He doesn't just make people laugh with his unique sense of humor, although that's good. He teaches people how to be creative, which is great. I start my talks with just a brief intro of how I got into uh, cartooning and also how I came to have such a great physique. And then I move quickly into uh, just uh, putting things up. Because if I just stick with the talk, you could almost be talking about accounting. Um, you know, it's somewhat interesting, but once you make it visual and, and then people start laughing, it just, uh, it changes the whole atmosphere. One of my favorite topics is medicine. And people always ask me why I'm so frequently doing cartoons about medicine and hospital situations. And it's because I've realized that stress and humor are very closely related. And the more stressful a situation I can place my characters in, it seems like the more opportunity for humor. Nurses are one of my favorite crowds to do because I notice the very dark senses of humor that most <laughs> nurses seem to have. But that's the beauty of it, Rita. I don't have to worry about my fat intake today. I'm having a quadruple bypass tomorrow. <laughs> Unfortunately, Carolyn, your body has rejected your facelift. <laughs> hey, Annette, put this on. He should be coming to any minute. But, you know, I think they take away, you know, just kind of a way to look at their jobs in a little more humorous light. And I think they already, you know, I've been in the hospital when I hear some pretty dark humor. Uh, and I know that's their way of dealing with stress. Um, but to me, cartooning uh, is primarily about stress, like taking something stressful, maybe even just mildly stressful, and showing the funny aspect of that. Well, what I do when I'm told I'm speaking to a group is, you know, I'll, I'll get in touch with the person who's heading up the organization and uh, talk to them about, you know, specifically what their group does and then what kind of cartoons would really uh, affect these people. I mean, if it's a group of nurses, it's pretty easy. I'm going to put medical cartoons up. Um, if it's just some general business people, you know, what kind of things might appeal to them? If it's social workers, which I've done, what kind of stuff might work for them? You know, in that case, it might be uh, parenting cartoons or daycare cartoons, um, just sort of life experience cartoons. So I try to just hone in on what material is going to have the biggest effect on uh, the audience. I'm always looking for popular trends in culture to, uh, you know, just have some fun with. And chicken soup has obviously been huge, so uh, I started doing cartoons about chicken soup. As I recall, the first one, I, I showed a couple that was tied up on their floor. It, you know, they'd obviously been burglarized. And, you know, after doing that, I got a phone call from Jack Canfield's office saying they liked the cartoon and they wanted, wondering if they could have the original. I said, sure. So I signed the original and sent it off. I actually first met John McPherson through his cartoons. I'd always been a fan of single frame cartoons because I just think they capture something in a one thought that blows you away. So 
uh, he was one of the masters of that, and so I'd seen his strip, and, and I loved it. And, um, but really paid attention to him more than just on a casual glance when there was a chicken soup cartoon. I thought, wow, because I think it was one of the first times, maybe the first time that a national cartoonist had noticed our, 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 uh, our line of books. So we met him and we had lunch and he was a wonderful guy. I was kind of shocked how normal he was because his, his humor is so bizarre. And the neat thing about John is, in addition to his cartoons, he understands humor at a deep level intellectually. And uh, he presents like at the National Humor Conferences and uh, does, uh, he'll actually draw cartoons on an overhead while he's speaking. And um, he's just a fabulous presenter and a really good friend and a dynamic being who's just, I, he's brought a lot of joy to the world, lifted a lot of people out of that place where you read the newspaper, you go in, you're all a little bit bummed out about the day and you walk away chuckling about life. And um, he makes us look at ourselves in a way we might not. And I think this is one of the great things about humorists. It kind of bursts our bubbles of our own pomposity and our own ridiculousness. And we see through and laugh at ourselves. And uh, as a result, we gain insight and we grow. And John has given us all that gift. One of the things that I show them that's a, a popular aspect of the talk is that when I'm really stuck for ideas, what I'll do is just draw a some bizarre situation, having no idea what the caption is going to be, and uh, just see what I can do with that. I mean, maybe I'll draw a car coming out of a car wash upside down, and, you know, you've got the attendant standing there, and he's got a, you know, he's going to have some dumb reason that their car flipped over while it was going through the car wash. You know, I'll read off three or four different captions that might work for the same drawing, and people will, you know, I can tell by their applause which of those captions they like best, and we kind of go back and forth and talk about which one is best and why. So it's fun to get the uh, audience involved like that. Here we have a man on an operating table, and one of these surgical lamps has fallen and crushed his face. Number one. Cancel the anesthesiologist. <laughs> Number two. Well, it looks like Mr. Gardner is going to get his money's worth out of this nose job. <laughs> and number three, ten to one that when he's recovering next week, he tells one of those stories about seeing a bright light at the end of a tunnel. <laughs> kind of teaching people how to be creative, you know. Creativity, I don't know that humor can really be learned, but I think creativity can or can be enhanced. You know, I think it's all about thinking outside the box um, because that's what a cartoonist does is look at life in a perspective that other people are not looking at it, you know, but they get it. When they see it, they get it. One of the things I do in the program, uh, you know, first I'll show how I will do some sort of uh, a strange drawing and see if I can come up with captions for it. But then what I do is take uh, a cartoon I've already done, you know, it's already been published, um, but I'll, I'll put it up without a caption and then have people write down their own captions for this cartoon. And it's very interesting some of the angles that people come up with. So that's how I'm kind of, you know, like teaching them to be creative and uh, you know come up with something weird for this situation and you know the ones I like are the ones that come up with some really off the mark uh, captions but the captions still work. I'm gonna close tonight with a section called uh, Killed by the Editor. I usually do a rough sketch of the cartoons and fax them into my editor and we go through them and tweak captions or try to smooth things out. But from time to time, you will say, no, you, you can't do that. <laughs> so here's one he said I could not do. No shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> no. no, 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 we can't do that. Can't have those bare naked hind ends there uh, showing up in a newspaper. 
And in the end, I think it was actually the little hairs that uh, pushed him over the edge. <clears throat> if I hadn't put the little hairs on there, I probably would have been able to get away with this. But a few years later, I decided to revisit the no pants topic. This is at the Plumbers and Electricians Fashion Boutique. <laughs> And uh, those are mannequins attired in the way we often see electricians and plumbers dressed. And he said, no, you can't, can't do that. You're showing that little hind end crack there. Can't be doing that. Can't be doing those hind end jokes. About uh, two minutes after Tom Brokaw announced the arrival of this drug on the market, I drew this cartoon and I faxed it in and I said, come on, we got to do this immediately. And they immediately just killed it. It's Viagra Falls. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just cannot do that. I said, why? What is the big deal? Is it just water? The water's swooping up in the air. <laughs> Little kids are going to not get why the water's swooping up in the air, and their parents are going to have to tell them. It's going to cause all kinds of embarrassment at the family dinner table. Can't do it. Okay. My editor uh, is actually a really good guy who tries to get through the big editors most of these cartoons. He actually fights very hard to, like, on my behalf. Um, but I really like to yank him around now. And so what I'll do is draw a cartoon that I know he can't possibly run and just watch him over the next course of the next four hours, uh, you know, via phone calls uh, as he tries to get it past, like, the higher up editors. So I drew this one knowing he, he would never be able to run it, but he did try for most of the day to get this one accepted. Hi, hon. How did your mammogram go? <laughs> so well, that one didn't make it either, but it uh, makes for good presentation material. So that concludes my talk tonight. Uh, thanks for being a great audience. I mean, that's, I want them to laugh, but I want them also, I think, to maybe look at life in a little different angle. I mean, I, I'm not saying something profound about life, but I mean, just about maybe things they can do on their job that uh, give a little twist to things, maybe ways to use humor in their profession. Speaking of creativity, John McPherson has created over 20 book collections, has an award-winning line of greeting cards, mugs, and calendars. For more information on John McPherson, contact the provider of this videotape. Thanks for watching.